common questions that we get is which de-icers are safest to use on concrete or on new concrete? Well, this is a difficult question for me to give you a brief answer to because the effects of de-icers on concrete are quite complex and there's been an enormous amount of research that's been done on this question in recent years. If I were to give you a presentation on all that we know about de-icers in concrete, it would be a very long presentation. But for now, let me give you a very brief overview that will hopefully help you better understand the basics of how de-icers affect the durability of concrete. There are three basic mechanisms by which de-icers can attack concrete. They can exacerbate freeze-thaw scaling, they can chemically react with the concrete to uh, break it down over time, and they can cause corrosion of the rebar in steel-reinforced concrete. Now, when rebar corrodes, the, the iron in the steel is getting converted to iron oxide. It's absorbing oxygen, and as it creates this new compound of iron oxide, it's expanding. And because that rebar is encased in concrete, there's very little room to accommodate that expanding reaction product. So as that rust layer grows, it starts to, it starts to exert pressure on the concrete matrix, and it will break it and crack it over time. But you can see that the way that uh, rebar corrosion affects uh, concrete durability is really an indirect effect of de-icers. It's coming from the corrosiveness of the de-icer to steel, and the, the uh, effects of de-icers on corrosion is really a completely separate topic. So I would like to save that for a future presentation. And right now, let's just focus on the direct ways that de-icers can attack concrete. The most common way that de-icers attack concrete is by increasing the amount of damage caused by freezing and thawing. Concrete is a porous material, and it generally contains water in the pores at the surface. And when water freezes, it expands. This expanding water exerts pressure and stress on the surrounding concrete matrix, and it can damage it. Now, it turns out that if, only thing that if the only thing that's present is water, concrete is able to withstand that stress pretty well. But if de-icing chemicals are dissolved in the water in the pores, it increases the amount of stress that occurs when that water freezes, and it can result in cracking, scaling, spalling of the surface, in exposure of the aggregate, and ultimately to breaking that concrete down. This is a process that we call freeze-thaw scaling. The good news is it turns out that properly made concrete is actually very resistant to freeze-thaw damage, even in the presence of de-icers. Modern concrete is protected from freeze-thaw damage largely by a process called air entrainment. Air entrainment introduces tiny bubbles or voids in the concrete, and these provide additional space for that water to expand into when it freezes, thereby reducing the pressure and the stress on concrete. So we know that properly produced, finished, and cured concrete is very resistant to freeze-thaw damage by de-icers. However, if the concrete is of marginal quality, if it's not properly air entrained or it has not been given enough time to cure, de-icers can cause damage to concrete.